Hello and welcome to the hearing. I'm John. And from Chicago's north side, I'm Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is from 1970, Climbing by Mountain. This is a tribute to the late, great Leslie uh, Leslie West. And for once, I mean late, great. I always say that in the descriptions when well, we do a tribute yeah. episode, but this time <laughs> I mean it. Mountain was an American hard rock band that formed on Long Island, New York in 1969 and was best known for their song, songs Mississippi Queen and the heavily sampled Long Red. This, uh, they're one of the many bands often credited with having influenced the development of heavy metal in the 70s. Climbing is the band's debut studio album. It was released on March 7th, 1970 on Windfall Records, produced by Felix Papalardi, and features Leslie West on guitar and vocals, Felix Papalardi on bass, piano, rhythm guitar on track 7, and vocals, Corky Lang on drums and percussion, specifically cowbell, and Steve Knight <laughs> on organ, mellotron, and handbells. Reminder, I don't edit any songs into our reviews for copyright reasons, but down in the description, if you're listening to this on YouTube or on our blog at johnandscotto.com, you'll find links to Climbing on Spotify and YouTube so you can follow along if you'd like. On to track one, the infamous Mississippi Queen. <laughs> oh, never, never heard of this one before. When they recorded the song, Papillardi insisted on numerous takes. Growing weary, growing weary, Lang started using his cowbell to count off. Papillardi liked it so much he left it in the mix. So <laughs> the infamous and the legendary cowbell at the beginning of this song was because Corky Lang got bored. <laughs> and it does it does add so much to it and oh, yeah. you totally get why they did the whole saturday Night live i mean that was supposed to be blue oyster cult, yeah that was blue oyster cult, but, but okay but but this of course you know this is a note that. i have on multiple songs the cowbell was invented for quirky line <laughs> the man is a genius with the cowbell um but this song is an absolute classic yeah i mean I mean, it's you have heard this song even if you don't know the name, and you probably know the name because it's right there in the beginning. Right. Uh, as a kid, I kind of just thought of it as beer commercial music because, of course, <laughs> yeah. it was before my time. Right. Uh, but it wasn't until I started listening to uh, Stern in the late '90s, you know, early 2000s, where oh. he really just made this strong case for it because he's apparently. A huge mountain okay. Leslie West fan. Mm -hmm. I went through a bit of a hippie phase in my late teens, early 20s, as you probably remember. Um, and so I got really into the classic rock thing. And so that's when I discovered Mountain. Um, but I didn't really fully appreciate them until now. Um, but I love that the opening, that opening riff is actually just kind of a really clever take on the Hoochie Coochie Man riff. Yeah. I know, it's bad to the bone for those who don't, those who don't, know, those who don't know Hoochie Coochie. And, and Leslie <laughs> West is just absolutely channeling Helen Wolf on that vocal. Um, Helen Wolf is a classic blues artist. Check him out if you haven't heard him. Um, very much in the vein of Muddy Waters. Very if you, similar. Oh. Very much in the vein of Muddy Waters, what were you saying? It is very similar to Zeppelin and, and you know, a whole lot of love. But it. It is. He's just, uh, he just fucking goes off on this. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is definitely, obviously, the strongest track on the album. With, the, I, you know, mm, not my favorite actually. I mean, I love it, but it's not. It didn't end up being my favorite. Um, I, I just also love the way he says Vicksburg. Um, Vicksburg. Vicksburg. <laughs> I have the way I have it written Vix B I G H G. <laughs> Until you, you'd said Long Island, that did, never made any sense well, no, to me. It he was, was like, oh. It's very specifically a North Jersey accent, actually. He was born in North <laughs> Jersey, grew up in New York in North Jersey. It's Vix Bike. It's not Vix Boig. It's Bike. All right. You know, it, it's that IGH Jersey thing that it's not quite New York. There's that subtle difference. Um, mm. you be, Although maybe Long Island I'm not as familiar with. I was going to say, because I am originally North Jersey, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe it's, maybe Long Island has the same accent. 
because I know I have you know people have you know neighbors and and you know relatives from North Jersey, and that true thing is very North Jersey. <laughs> it's Sprague. Yeah. Um, moving on to the about the song, love the little hints of piano. It's just very subtle. You get these little piano trills in there. And love the little call and response between the vocal and the guitar in verse two. And a nice melodic solo. Like Leslie could go off, but he he really restrained himself most of the time. He's yeah, just so versatile. Mm-hmm. Just oh, I mean, he's an amazing guitar player. The, I, the, what he does on this album from yeah. beginning to end is just like, wait, what? Now he's playing that way. Yeah. Um. And I, and I love just how it, it just reverts back to that epic opening right at the end. Like, they knew that was the money. <laughs> yeah. Um, on to track two. Theme from an imaginary western written by Jack Bruce and Pete Brown. Uh, the song originally appeared on Bruce's 1969 songs, or album Songs for a Tailor, which Felix Papillardi produced. Before Mountain, Papillardi was a writer and producer and ranger with Cream. And I was kind of wondering why they just didn't have, uh, you know, Wes join Cream, you know? <laughs> um, well, Unless they just couldn't handle Ginger Baker anymore. <laughs> well, I don't know. No, um, Papillardi wasn't in Cream. Cream was around before Papillardi got to them. Um, actually, he... They just broke up before this album came out. Okay, because he worked on Ginger well, Because Papillardi... right didn't Papillardi work with them and then... yeah. Like sixty nine was goodbye. Oh, okay, then... yeah, right, you're right. It was, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, I well, I mean, who, do you want to replace Clapton? Well, I think I thought that was the point of Cream breaking up was that Clapton wanted to move on, go on his own. Yeah, yeah. But it, but of I'm saying it also could have been that Ginger Baker was a maniac. Well, but... Ginger Baker's a maniac, and I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm biased because I started. I mean, Clapton has proven himself to be a garbage person. Just putting that out there, but um, <laughs> but I know I started playing guitar because of Clapton, so I'm maybe a little biased. Those are not shoes I would have wanted to step into. Although after Papillardi passed away in '83, uh, um. Felix uh, or, or Leslie and Corky formed um, they uh, formed a band with Jack Bruce. <laughs> he replaced. He basically replaced Felix. So, you know. Right. So I don't. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it just. It does. Uh, you know. It was kind of like why? Why didn't? Why didn't they thought of that? You know. Mm. <laughs> just or, or just. I think Bruce wanted to just do his own thing yeah, yeah. himself after being in a group. Right. So he didn't want a, another band to be in with, but. I think they missed an opportunity there. Um, but back to the theme imaginary Western. Nice and contract. I also, one last thing. Okay. Clapton pretty much was dead to me after uh, he did that terrible unplugged Layla. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I haven't been into his music since August, the album August um, in the late 80s. But I, I mean, his his opinions are shit, too, as he, as he has proven in recent years. Um but anyway. I was fine with him in the eighties, but mm-hmm. then once he did that uh, that version of Layla, I I was like, no, no, mm. that is just unforgivable. <laughs> How do you do that to your stuff? But Theme Imaginary Western, nice contrast from Mississippi Queen. Um, Felix sings this one. They they split vocals throughout the album. Um, right, completely it's kind different of a, voice. Wait, what? <laughs> hmm? Like I signed on for for Mississippi Queen and Smash Mouth Rock and Roll, and then this starts. So kind of like, wait, what? <laughs> but I love that contrast. They're just two completely different vocalists. You know, Leslie West is yeah. this intense blues singer, and and Felix just has this nearly nice kind of pretty you know typical good singer voice. <laughs> He's doing a, a very similar Jack Bruce kind of uh That's who originally performed it. So. Yeah. <laughs> he wrote it. So yeah, he's kind of impersonating Jack Bruce a little bit. Um and I think having two vocalists for them really worked throughout the album. It just gave it a lot of great contrast, gave them a lot of versatility. Um I would have preferred more West than than Bruce though, honestly. <laughs> or or Pavlardi. Um Oh yeah, yeah, Pavlardi. But love the vocal melody, love the the, the organ part. Because Leslie again very holds it down, keeps it plays very tastefully. It just creates this kind of wall of sound. 
that the organ and the bass just kind of play over. Um, love right, the if it wasn't bass for Leslie, I don't, would not be sold on this song, though, because it's very, I mean, they're really doing a Procol Harum, yeah. you know, like Whiter Shade of Hell. What's that? I like Whiter Shade of Hell, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. That That's what they're doing here, though. Like, yeah, I those guess keyboards similarities. and everything. Um, but but I, it I was, think... I don't think I realized just how influential that song was until I, I read something about like the progressive rock scene mm-hmm. and how when that song came out everyone was just like holy shit did you hear this <laughs> yeah everybody from keith everson to like mm-hmm. like we're, that's what we're doing well this was pre-synthesizer so to have someone do that yeah. with an organ was kind of epic right you know um and and this is mostly guitar. It's mostly in in terms of what the rhythm section, what's really holding down the wall of sound. It's mostly Leslie on guitar with the organ, with Steve Knight on the organ, just kind of playing over top of him. And but you can see this is so much came from this though. Yeah, you know, like this is Judas Priest. This is you know Iron Maiden, Aerosmith. <laughs> like <laughs> every okay. '80s hair metal band came out of this. Oh, we'll we'll get to metal with the next song. Um, but yeah. love the nice tasteful solo on this one too. Speaking of, on to track three, Never in My Life. The beginning of this is just absolute proto metal. Yeah. Um just the vocal pure fury. Um this this is unfiltered Leslie West. Right, and I was like, this is more like it. <laughs> <laughs> Would have never expected an organ to work on this song too. But there's just some really yeah. nice organ parts on it. Um, it's just this simple blues song arranged brilliantly. Um, just fun, loud, furious. Um, Corky Lang again. This he is why the cowbell was invented. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have which Skinner took from this too. Yeah. Like this, the last one and this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's just total. You know, it's kind of like the beginning of Southern rock. And that's the thing that got me with this album, because, again, I, I knew of Mountain, but wasn't at all familiar with them to, beyond Mississippi Queen, really. And one or two other songs that I'd heard here and there. And yeah, I same was here. just amazed at the versatility. Yeah. And, and how much influence they had. A lot of times, because Felix had worked with Cream, they were written off as kind of a second-rate Cream clone. You could get that though, because there's a lot of creep songs on this album. Um, and 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 Leslie was written off as a Clapton clone, which is absolute bullshit. No. <laughs> yeah, we we'll get to the instrumental, which well, never in my life was almost my favorite, and then I heard the instrumental. <laughs> like I mean, Clapton had some you know rock songs, but mm-hmm. like Wes, c- completely. I mean, just. Yeah. It's not even close. I mean, I definitely would put him... I, I mean, it, if you're talking about him versus Paige now, that's that's something I don't know. Well, Paige <laughs> is a question. Really yeah, think about. I mean, Paige was ama- is, is, is still amazing. I mean, there's a documentary um, where he did... It was an interview with him, The Edge, and Jack White. I can't think of the name of it off town, offhand, but look for that. It's amazing. It's basically a conversation between the three. Paige still has it. <laughs> Yeah. He's still an incredible player. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not going to compare Leslie to Paige. And I'm, I don't really want to compare Leslie to, to Clapton. They both have their own thing. But Leslie is definitely not a Clapton clone. You there? Yeah. You know, Did he ever do a terrible version of Layla, though? You know, <laughs> Clapton was a mellow, he slow hand. You know, he was a mellow, melodic <laughs> blues player. Leslie. Yeah goes back to like i said howlin wolf muddy waters that shit you know that real deep yeah. chicago blues is what muddy goes back to um but yeah um never my life just loud and aggressive and fun and fairly short and just a, a blast on to track four silver paper love the mix on this one nothing is buried um love the riff when it slows down a bit great groove Great use of the two vocalists, because Felix sings the verse, Leslie sings the chorus. Okay. Um, it's definitely, this one's definitely, like, a cream song. Yeah. 
but it's they're, just they're this, definitely going for that yeah great simple song beautiful arrangement um felix uh probably arranged it because you know felix did arranging for cream so of course it's going to sound a bit like that um on to track five for yasker's farm context yasker's farm is where woodstock took place this was the year after woodstock um they actually played it there yeah um it wasn't called that when they played it there but right. it, it, they were still writing it and they they played it there and mm-hmm. that's what they they gave it the name right um great low organ part in the beginning um great bass tone love the vocal love how it gets heavy in the chorus because the, the verse is kind of mellow kind of similar to um theme from imaginary western kind of a similar verse kind of vibe and then the chorus just comes in aggressive and loud chorus reminds me a lot of like the guess who yeah i get that um just a great a more great, great contrast between the two vocalists um love the melodic bass during the last part of the solo um now onto my favorite track six to my friend it's just a few minutes of leslie west absolutely going off on an acoustic guitar yeah, if this album didn't have Mississippi Queen on it, I think I'd take this one. Mm. He just really shows his versatility. There's no hint of blues. I was reading a, a thing about him, and someone they were talking about him being seen as this Clapton clone. This proves he wasn't a Clapton clone, because he goes from like almost classical to Indian, and there's no trace yeah. of the blues in there. Yeah, he's just all over the place in three minutes. And it just, I mean... Reminds me a lot of Steve Howe, and that is saying something. Yeah. Um, love the harmonics in the beginning. Love the kind of the real fast high hammer-ons and pull-offs. Um, gets very fast at the end. Great Indian feel. Just absolutely right. blew my mind. That you know, because I knew of him as a blues player. You know, yeah. Les Paul Jr. and the, the you know the blues stuff. I it blew my mind that he could do this. Um. On to track seven, the Laird. Um, by the way, no, Laird is some, Scottish for Lord. Um, as I said, some great nights and very bad mornings after <laughs> my encounters with the Laird. It's also the name of a very cheap vodka. Yes. <laughs> nice, moody, atmospheric, mostly acoustic tune. Um, kind of medieval sounding. It's one of my favorite of their cream songs. <laughs> uh, I mean, I thought it was it, it had a very hypnotic quality to it. Yeah. Um, kind of makes the hair of my, and the, well, and I say this metaphorically because I shave my head, but the hair on the back of my <laughs> neck stand up. <laughs> but perfect use of Felix's voice. Love the tone of the lead guitar. Almost kind of sounds a little kind of synthy. Um, electric lead with all that acoustic was a great contrast. N- again, nice call and response between the vocal and the lead guitar, and drum. Great use of drums on what is mostly an acoustic ballad. Yeah. Um, track eight, sitting on a rainbow. Um, another just loud Leslie West song. Um, great opening drum part. Really fun riff. Um, My only complaint: it might have been too short. Yeah, I could I could have used more of this longer solo. Um, love the bass part during the riff. Almost sounds like a low vocal. Yeah, like someone comes came in and sang a part there. Um, so I'm just. <laughs> A sucker for distorted bass, as I've said many times. Um, amazing groove. Um, the ascending bass part during the solo I loved. And you know, again, Cowbell was invented for Corky Lang. On to track nine, the closer. Boys in the band. They went out with a ballad. Which was an interesting <laughs> choice. They opened with Mississippi Queen and go out with a ballad. <laughs> um, really nice moody tune. Um, love all the symbol work in the intro. Uh, Corky Lang deserves to be up there with like Bonzo and Keith Moon and Ginger, I think. Wow. Uh, he, he does not get the credit he deserves. The other two absolutely do, but Corky does not. Um, yeah. Really love the piano riff. Um, great lead guitar tone, of course. The pre-chorus, kind of, where it starts getting a little heavy, reminds me a bit of Early Rush. Hmm. And, and, and yeah, you'd see where Rush Sprite would, would come out of this. Yeah, and, and Neil joined the band just a, couple, a few years later uh, in 74. So, you know, they were probably very, you know, and 
initially, you know, the original Rush with John Rutsey, very influenced by The Who and Zeppelin Mountain mm. was probably in there. Um, great harmony on the chorus. Um, really nice dual lead guitars in the last verse. Um, and just this, you know, say goodbye to the boys in the band. It's just this perfect song, <laughs> kind of on the nose song to go out on. Yeah. So, so yeah, who, who else sang guitar? Played guitar. Oh, pa- Papillardi played lead on too. Papillardi played co-lead. rhythm on one song uh, on um, the Laird. He played rhythm on. He did uh, vocals, bass, and guitar and piano on this. So he was all over the place. Okay, I, I, for the the notes I'd seen, he only played guitar on one track, on uh, seven on the Laird. Um, but so oh, would you? Yeah, it was like lead. Yeah. Oh, the lead is Leslie. Um, yeah, would you recommend it? Ooh, I've kind of, I was kind of on the fence, but I think the last few tracks did, uh, did win me over. So yeah, I would say yes. I think there's, uh, it's, I mean, they might. I kind of want to go back and forth to see who actually does it better than more Cream. To tell you the <laughs> truth, because I mean, Cream, you know, the, there's the hits, and then you kind of get lost in some of their other tracks. Mm-hmm where I think they might, this might actually be a bit more consistent. It's just, I, they're not first. I absolutely fucking loved it. It's, it's a masterpiece to me. Uh, strenuously recommend it. And I, I think it'll be in my top five at the end of the year. Um, actually, yeah. Even if, if you're not a fan of the songs, there's, I mean, always Wes mm-hmm. guitar playing. Yeah. It's kind of worth the price of admission. Right. So. And his voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He has a, such a great blues voice. I wish I, I prefer his singing uh, mm. to Papillardi's. I, I if I have to pick which I prefer, definitely Leslie. I'm I'm a I love the blues, but yeah, you know, I give just... you give the ballad or maybe a song or two on the album, <laughs> and you give your your rock guy, your rock god, the lead the whole way through. I just like the contrast between the two. Um, I actually bought this album last night. Oh yeah, that's how much I enjoyed it. Um. So, yeah, I, it's, like I guess it's probably going to be in my top five at the end of the year. So that's it for climbing. Until next time, if all goes well, when we'll be reviewing the, Into the Unknown by Bad Religion, taking another, hopefully doing that next week. Um, <laughs> once again, can't wait for you to hear that. Until then, of it's course, like always. It's your, at- hmm? your third attempt at it, isn't it? Second. Because it was going to be this okay. week, but Leslie passed away on the 23rd and you, you can tell from what we said about him, we definitely had to do a trivia. Um, yeah. So hopefully that rules you next week. Until then, of course, always never remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are.